Today, guys, we're doing a really interesting case on a young girl who has two enormous disc herniations. So I want to show you the MRI. If you look at this MRI, this is her spine. This is a view as if she's laying on her back. We're looking up the spinal canal. So this is the spinal bone in the front. These are the spinal bones in the back. This is the arch. This is the nerve sac. And normally the disc is contained in between the bones. So this dark color is the disc. When you go to the next level, you can see that right below the disc, there's this massive black fragment that's taking up space and smashing the nerve sac. You see how circular the nerve sac is here and how it looks compressed here? This fragment is displaced posteriorly and is compressing that nerve sac. If you look down, it goes to the next level even. So it's traveled down the spinal canal. There's another piece, a huge piece of disc that's sitting in the spinal canal below the disc. That's called a sequestered fragment. So she has a sequestered disc herniation. You can see it a little bit easier on the side here. So the bottom two discs are dark. There's a big disc herniation at the level above. There's an even bigger one here. You can see the tail trailing down like candle wax. And then right below it at the next level, there's that big fragment of disc that's separated from the parent disc and smashing the nerves. So what we did was to address these discs, sometimes all we have to do is do a disc, her disc herniation sur surgery, which is a discectomy. We can do that with small operations, small in in incisions and a microscope. But when someone is unstable, which she is, that's why it's vital to look at stability. I get x-rays to look at the stability of the spine and have patients flex and extend. And if they shift, you can't just do a discectomy because what will happen is you remove tissue and bone to remove the fragment and you actually increase instability. So you'll see patients have surgery after surgery after surgery with a surgeon's imp improper attempt to remove a disc but not stabilize the unstable segments. So she does have unstable segments both at the bottom two levels at L4-5 and L5-S1. So in addition to removing the disc herniation, we have to remove the entire disc and fuse the spine so that we can remove the fragment that's pinching the nerves but also stabilize her spine so she can have a long-term success from this operation. One surgery and done is the plan, not multiple operations that fail. So follow me, we'll show you what we did on the front. So you can see on this x-ray on the side view, this is the front and this is the back, the spinal bone, the vertebral body is here. There's another one here and then the sacrum is down here. In between that, you can see this dark shadow. This is actually a cylindrical graft of bone that we put in place. We took out the entire disc, the fragment that was herniated here and a part of the fragment that was herniated here have already been removed in addition to the entire disc in the front and replaced by a big structural graft of bone which will support and provide structural stability to the spine over time it will fuse. These plates are buttress plates. They hold it in place until the spine fuses. What you're gonna see next is we're gonna put screws in from the back and we're gonna hold the spine together. These grafts and these plates were put in from the front. Next, we're gonna go to the back of the spine and we'll stabilize our spine, remove a part of the bony arch and now remove the fragment that's sitting down here in her spinal canal to make sure that her nerves are totally free of pressure. Give her a stable spine and free the nerves. That's the goal today.